All right, Coach Jordan here for another Milford Robotics tutorial for LEGO Spike Prime programming, specifically for FLL. So we're going to continue our series today of sections of code blocks. Uh, we've already done the event blocks, and today we're going to do the second series, which will be the light blocks. So I've set up some experiments here to walk you through as we go through each of the options that are available in that section. And let's kick it off. So the first one we're going to talk about is this just turn on, and I'm going to call this an icon. Um, and you've probably seen me use this quite a bit. Uh, what you can do here is you can come in, you can turn everything off, turn everything on. Uh, on would be the lights on for that element, that pixel. Off would be all pixels in an off position. And then you can just draw on here. So let's just draw our, our little arrow here. And if I hit the play button, you can see in the bottom corner there that it's correctly displaying that icon. And that's it, that's what that does. Uh, it turns it on permanently until something else happens. Uh, now, with this particular element and the next particular element, I want to talk about something real quick, and that is that um, there's a capsule uh, shape to this element, so it's, uh, it does fit a f variable. You can see that I could put the variable there, and obviously I'm not going to use volume, but just to show you that it is a capsule shape and it does accept a variable. Uh, but I want to point out that I have tried nearly every combination I can possibly think of, of variables or lists, and uh, string content or number content or list content, even object notation inside of that. And I can't find anything here that I can use to make it draw a shape using a dynamic variable. Um, also, I can't find anywhere within the software where you can record the state of the screen uh, for playback later. So there's no way you can store the screen uh, pixels into a variable so that you can put it back in here. So while this is uh, looks like it's built to accept a shape, of a variable. Uh, so far, we've been unable to do that. All right, so if you uh, do know of that, uh, if that's something you figured out, please post in the comments below, share it with us, because uh, uh, we'd be happy to, to start to tinker with that, because there's some interesting things that you could do if you could dynamically create shapes. Um, it's possible that we're in version 1.1.1 of the software and it's not available yet. It's possible it will never be available, but just want to let you know that that's something that we were experimenting with and couldn't do. Uh, while we're here also, I want to talk about the fact that there is a turn off pixels element. So if you ever do turn on the pixels uh, and display a shape, the way to get rid of them is to either do something else, you could do another one, which would overwrite it, or you can also use this turn off pixels element, which we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future. So that's really the turn on block uh, in its entirety, pretty simple, and pretty straightforward. And then the next block that we have is exactly the same with a little bit of a nuance, and that is that it has a timer uh, where after a certain amount of time, it will hide that again. So you know, in this case, I have an example where I've got an up arrow and it's gonna display that for two seconds. And then after two seconds, it'll go away. So realistically, this um, block actually does three things. It um, draws an arrow on the screen or it draws an icon on the screen five by five pixel grid element. Uh, then it has a timer delay for two seconds, and then it has a screen wipe. So it's almost like a combination of the turn off pixels we talked about, this element, and in between a little wait block. Uh, but it's uh, much more convenient because it's all built into one block. Uh, and as we mentioned, again, this is dynamic, but we can't figure out how to use it. But this element over here is dynamic, so you can dynamically put in here the amount of time that you want to do that. And we've been playing around with using that to do some animations. So I'm going to show you that now. I'm just going to pull that out of the way and I'll pull up this animation example. And let's run that so you can see what's going to happen. Uh, before I do that, actually, let me just walk you through the code. So we have an animation delay variable set to a quarter of a second at the moment and we're going to loop forever around uh, this animation and you can see it's just going to animate as if a line is diagonally moving through the display and we're using the uh, variable that we set to determine how long uh, each one is going to display for so they're going to happen sequentially one after the other all right so let's run that and we can switch over to the camera view and you can see there that we're displaying an animation. All right, I'm going to leave it there for a second, and I'm going to come back and just change the animation delay to be something smaller. So instead of going quarter second, we're going to do a 20th of a second. 
So I'm gonna hit run on that and I'll just show you the results. We're still looking at the camera here. And there you go, you see we got a, a super fast version of the same animation. So there, there's just a little example of some fun uh, animations you can create by messing around with that particular element and uh, using the delay in a dynamic way. All right, that leads us to our next block, which is the write block. The write block really just to accepts a, a number or a string and it displays it on the display. If it's more than one character, it does it in a marquee style where it uh, animates from left to right. Uh, and so we'll just show you what that looks like. Go back to the camera. And you can see there it's Milford and then Robotics. All right. Now, uh, while I'm here, I just want to talk about the fact that, yes, again, this is dynamic. You can put a variable in here with a string and it'll display whatever you'd like. Um, I will say that this is probably one of the features I like least about uh, Spike Prime is that uh, when you're displaying uh, a large text string, let's say you were trying to print out a variable, um, it just isn't very readable or usable or efficient uh, for doing this. Uh, you really can't read anything longer than a few characters in any efficient way because you have to wait for it to cycle through. And if you look away or you blink, you might miss a character. Uh, so it's just not a very good way, a very efficient way of doing this. One of the shortcomings of this uh, screen, which uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, I, I'm not a super big fan of that of that uh, feature of this tool. All right, so that's right. Uh, and just before we move on from that, I just wanted to point out that from what we can see uh, with the right block, there aren't any ways to modify it. So you can't speed up the animation. You can't change the orientation, the direction of the animation. You can't uh, make the text larger or smaller, clean up the, maybe use a different font. It really is stuck with the, uh, the version that is pre-written here. So that is the right block. Probably not something that many of us are going to be using very often because of that limitation. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about in combination with other uh, code. And so uh, that is set pixel brightness. And so the screen has these 25 pixels. And each of these pixels can either be on or off. But there's also variations in brightness between those. Um, in my own testing, I haven't been able to see a difference between uh, the tens and any other number. It feels like it's uh, it's gated to only be done at 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, uh, et cetera. So the other thing that you'll notice is that if it's a really low brightness, it's almost so, um, uh, so dark that you can't see it. So uh, you might see me later using some high level of brightness and avoiding the lower brightness because of that issue. All right, so that's set pixel brightness. And I'm just to demo what, what's gonna happen here. I'm going to run a turn on block. It's gonna turn on the arrow and then it's gonna hit set pixel brightness and we're gonna set it to 80%. So this will normally be at 100%, but we're gonna set it to 80. And this is actually not gonna work, but I wanted to show it to you. So I'm gonna hit play switch the camera and you can see that it's actually still displaying at 100 percent why is that if we come back to the screen the reason is that the set pixel pixel brightness doesn't work on anything that happens before it is set so you actually have to flip the order the uh order here so if you set pixel brightness first and then uh build your element we'll hit that play again go back to the camera there you can see now that we have a dimmer arrow so you have to be very careful that when you set your pixel brightness that you then uh, redisplay whatever it is you're just going to display so that you can see the change. All right. So let's come back to the code and just show you a little experiment with that one. In this case, I have a uh, my block, uh, which I'm calling pulse display. So I'm going to just grab that my block out of the, the side code here and put it in our program starts. Uh, and that's going to run this code over here, which is really just going to animate through, uh, uh, kind of pulse the display of a, what I'll call a snowflake icon. I'm going to show you what that does first. So just making sure I switch to the camera here so you can see. And it's not working. <laughs> so I must have messed something up here. Let me just quick check and see if there's anything that I've done wrong here. Wait a quarter second. Close to display. I don't see anything wrong, but it's not working. Hold on one second. Let's come back to the code. 
All right, so, oh, so we just disconnected our, our code there. All right, let's try that again. We'll run it again. Come back to our code, create our camera. And there you go, you can see it's displaying this in a pulsing fashion. It goes bright and then it goes back to dim. Um, now that's pretty slow, so I'm gonna come back to the code. And I'm just gonna change the timer again like I did on the other one. So let's do uh, 0 0.05, so it's nice and fast. And we'll run it again. And let's look at that. So here you go, now it's pulsing quite quickly through the 10 degrees of, uh, of brightness that you can display, all right? So there's a good, um, good little example in the code of how to uh, pulse your display brightness. Uh, just to go over that in the code real quick, um, this is kind of a, a little bit fancier than some of the other experiments I've been showing, but it's, if you watch some of the other videos, you should understand it. We've got a my block here, uh, which sets three variables, and then it has a forever loop. In the forever loop, all it's doing is changing the brightness using a value i, which we had previously set to 100. Uh, so it's important that the i value is from 1 to 100 when we're changing it, making it dynamic. And then we have the um, snowflake design. You'll notice that again that we're doing it after we've set the brightness. So it displays uh, the change. And then uh, we're changing i by a modifier. The modifier is either this 10 or this negative 10. So these are two constants that I've set. And so we either increment it by 10 or decrement it by 10. And then it's going to wait the timeout. Um, so how does it change the modifier? Uh, so I have the change here, and then there's a listener up here that's listening to that i variable whenever it's uh, less than 10. Uh, it's technically less than 9, but less than 10 or greater than 90, or in this case, actually 91. And then it's going to uh, switch. And if it's in the lower one, it'll put the positive value. Otherwise, it'll put the negative value. And that just uh, has the effect of uh, incrementing by 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, until it gets to 100, and then decorating by negative 10 all the way down to zero, and then re reversing that. All right, so that's what that code is doing, in case you were uh, interested in learning how that was done. All right, so we're moving right along here. That was set pixel brightness, and uh, just going to put these back to clean this up. The next one that we have is set pixel at, and I'm going to call this x, comma y to um, brightness. So. Let's bring this in. We'll get rid of our my block for now. And let's look at this one. So in this case, we have an X coordinate which we can choose, a Y coordinate we can choose, and then the brightness. Is, we we're just doing the same value in the pixel brightness, but in this case, we also have the ability to turn on one pixel. Uh, so you can think of the first column as X. These are your uh, horizontal elements. So these are your columns. So I guess set column one, column two, column three. Let's keep it at column one for now. And then I can also choose a row because this is the Y coordinate. And so let's choose column five. We'll keep it at 100% for now. And let's display that. There you go. The bottom left-hand corner is on as we would have expected based on what we just did. And then uh, just to show you another example, let's do the middle column and the middle row. And this time we'll do it at 50%. So you can see all three of them change. We'll build it again switch back to the camera, and there you go, our center element is being displayed at 50%. All right. Now as an experiment to show you what can be done with this, um, let's look at this code over here. Got a pretty big block over here. It looks uh, scarier than it actually is. But this block actually um, is creating three variables, the same three variables that we talked about in here. So you have a a pixel number for your X, a pixel number for Y, and then the modifier is going to be used to change the brightness. In this case, I'm using a randomizer for the brightness. I'm going to take that out for now. And let's just leave the brightness for now at 100. All right. And so all this is going to do is it's going to forever loop through, resetting at the top, but repeating inside first the uh, X coordinate change and then the Y coordinate change. So what you're going to see here is that the X is going to move from left to right through the five pixels in a in a row, and then it's going to move down to the next column and then do the same thing and the same thing all the way down to the last uh, row. All right, so let's let's play and display that. Switch the camera, and you can see um, that display. Oh, I have to be careful here because there's an interference because I'm looking at that modifier variable. So I'm going to come back to the code to show you what I mean. If you recall in the last experiment, I have a when that's looking at um, 
uh, I and changing the modifier. So since I is undefined, it's actually doing this. So I'm just going to move this off so that that doesn't interfere. And we're going to run it one more time. There you go. All right, so now it's working properly. So 100%, and it's just going to cycle through mm -hmm. each of the pixels available to us. All right, so that's what that's doing. And uh, you know, we could mess around with this a little bit. We can make it slower. Um, we can make it faster. I can also um, put this randomizer back in. And what this randomizer is going to do is it's going to set the brightness. Every time it does one loop, uh, it's going to choose a brightness from 60 to 100%. Um, you can see we're randomizing from 6 to 10, and then multiplying that by 10 to get our uh, increment of 10 modifier. So let's look at that on the camera. And you'll just see as it goes that sometimes it's darker like this one, and sometimes it's brighter like that one. All right. So just some example experiments so you can see how that can be used. All right, so that was set pixel at x by y to brightness. Uh, the next one is set center button light to red, uh, or to any color. The center button is the one in the middle. I'll just point to it here on the display. Uh, make sure we're on the right screen here. And so yeah, you can come in here and you can hit play. I'm not going to move to the camera, but you can see in the corner there that now our button is red. It's very obviously red. I can choose another one. I can go to yellow. I can hit play. And this time it'll be yellow. So you can use that maybe to show an alert and give you feedback on the state of something. Uh, pretty nice little feature. Now you'll also uh, remember that this can be made dynamic. Uh, so I just want to show you that real quick. I'm going to grab a color variable here. Oh, actually I already have it up here. So I'm going to throw the color variable in here. And I'm going to uh, just beforehand, I'm going to set that color variable. And uh, the obvious choice would be to set it to red, right? Uh, beforehand, uh, we had the option of red, yellow, green. So um, it would be red and we're just popping that variable. So now we're defining that string as red. So if you hit run, I'm not going to switch over again, but if you look at the screen, nothing happens. Why did nothing happen? Well, you can try capital red, you can buy lowercase red, you do all caps, uh, nothing happens if you do a string. So why is that? Why can't you just write the, the color in there? Well, if you go to the help and you go to um, the block descriptions and you come down to uh, event blocks, which we did last time, in the one color is event block, there's a listing here. And along with the string names, there's also a number for each one. So if you try that number, it'll actually work. So that's how you get this to work dynamically. So instead of hitting red here, I'm going to hit nine. Oh, got to delete red first. And I'm going to hit play. So now in the bottom corner, you'll see it does change to red. And we said that before that in that screen, it said seven is yellow. So we hit play here. That'll work. All right, so there you go, yellow. So let's look at a, an experiment for that one. I'm just gonna pop this back off. We'll get rid of our variable for now. And let's look at a little experiment of uh, playing with the color sensors. What I have here is another giant loop uh, and it's gonna increment through each of the colors available from zero to 10 and then back down to zero again. Um, it's got a little bit of a delay and it's using that color variable to, um, uh, to use it, as it increments to display the incremented color. So you're going to see each color displayed up and then down and up and then down again. So let's switch to the camera this time. And if you look, you can see it's pulsing through each of the colors that are available to us. All right. And then it reverses through them. A little bit of fun with the center button light colors. All right. All right. So that's that. Um, and then the last element that we have here is um, what we're calling the distance sensor in LEGO Spike Prime. So the distance sensor uh, on the camera, I'll just show you the one that we know uh, that you can see. Uh, now you've probably heard me refer to this previous in previous videos as the ultrasonic sensor. That's what we call it on the EV3. One time I think I accidentally called it the hydrosonic sensor. It is definitely not a hydrosonic sensor. But in LEGO Spec Prime, they refer to the same sensor as the uh, distance sensor, which is a pretty good, easy to understand name for it, right? And with this, uh, you have two variables that you can set up, either E 
or this one over here. E is dynamic and actually you can just put a letter in here and you can choose that. Um, it works pretty well. So if you had more than uh, one element, you wanted to dynamically choose which one you wanted to light up, you could. You could guess. I guess you could make a uh, a little array of six uh, eyeballs and, and animate through them if you had six distance sensors. And then on the other side, you have an option of four different lights on that to turn on and off. So in this case, I'm going to hit play, and you'll see on the screen that those two light up. Let me make sure that that's visible by switching to the camera. Hopefully that's uh, viewable in the camera there. And then while I'm holding the camera, I'm just going to make it so that only one eye blinks and we'll show the difference. All right. And that's how you use the distance sensor uh, lights. You can uh, make expressions, I suppose, by using that tool. All right, coming back to the code, uh, that's the last one. So that's the, the whole light section. Should be a nice, fast video. Hopefully that was interesting and a good overview of all the tools that you have here on your light. The only one that we didn't really cover as an individual um, block was the um, turn off pixels, which we talked about at the beginning. Um, and that's it. I think that's a pretty good overview. So if you uh, enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. We're going to continue to make Lego Spike Prime content uh, so that uh, we can all get up to speed on how to use this tool. All right.